The grace and the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome home to Unity Presbyterian Church. We extend a special welcome to our guests and visitors and invite everyone, visitors, and members to sign the red friendship patch you'll find at the end of your pews. Our last reminder, our sensory-friendly accessible Easter egg hunt is Saturday the 23rd from 1 to 3 p.m. Be sure to let Diana know if you plan to have a special needs child attend so our helpers are aware. Also, for those of you who have been bringing in items to fill those Easter baskets for the Ronald McDonald House, there will be a group of folks from Team Philip along with Pastor Amy staying after the Easter egg hunt on Saturday to fill all those baskets. They are hoping to be able to make up 100 of them. So if you can help, plan to stay from about 3.30 to maybe, or to maybe 5 or 5.30 to help out with that. And for parents of our Sunday school age children, on Easter morning, March 31st, there will be Sunday school for the preschool or nursery class only. The elementary class will join in the worship service that morning. Are there any other announcement we need to make at this time? Good morning. Good morning. I'm here this morning representing your mission committee. We are a congregation here at Unity that values mission work. Mission is one way in which we do God's work here on earth. All of us here in this sanctuary and watching online contribute to the mission work of this church. It might be by volunteering or contributing money to our four special offerings, including the great hour of sharing that's going on now or to the Lenten discipline that's also going on right now or to the wishing well which is a lot going on right now. <laughs> uh, those three things, by the way, are all described in today's bulletin. Uh, or to one or more of the PCUSA mission co-workers, or to any of the other projects that we help sponsor. Maybe you reach out to help people in your neighborhood. Mission work doesn't just have to happen here at Unity. It happens, look out the windows, out there. Uh, I once had a person tell me, that some churches choose not to have stained glass windows so that when you're here at the service, you can look outside to see where God's work needs to be done. And that's something I'll always remember. There are a variety of Bible uh, verses that help describe this type of service. From 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. From the Acts chapter 20, verse 35, In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak, remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. You've all heard that one. From Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. And finally, from Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 and 2, Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by so doing, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Val and I had the uh, honor and the uh, pleasure of uh, teaching this uh, most recent confirmation class. And in that class, we talked about not only what does it mean to, to be a Christian, but more importantly, what does it mean to, to, uh, to do as a Christian? What kinds of things do we do as Christians? And mission work is certainly a very important part of that. And we, today, uh, what I'm really up here for is to um, uh, give special recognition to a long-term member of our, of our mission committee. So Nisa, would you please stand up? <laughs> Yeah. 
You didn't, you didn't see, maybe you didn't see, but needs to give a little jump there before she. Had. <laughs> that's that's why I'm doing this. <laughs> Nisa has recently retired from about 25 years of volunteering at Joseph's Coat. <clears throat> she has been and continues to be active in many other mission activities, including supplying lots of cookies for faith mission meal and sandwich making for friends of the homeless. And I'm sure many of you know personally how uh, about Nisa's kindness and generosity. Um, Pam has a bouquet of flowers for you, Nisa. Uh, as a token of our love for you and for the many years of mission work you have done in God's name and spirit. And we know that your work is not done, just like the work of our congregation in terms of mission is also not done. So, Nisa, thank you so much. Thank you very much. I trust that that's a warm fuzzy. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh man, and while, while Laura makes her way uh, up here, uh, I will also mention very briefly a reminder to our session members that we will be meeting this coming Wednesday, uh, the 20th, rather than uh, when we would ordinarily meet, which is right in the middle of Holy Week. Uh, so session members, we'll see you on Wednesday. Also, uh, our confirmands and uh, prospective new members will be quote-unquote examined <laughs> by the session on Wednesday, so uh, please plan to be there as well. Uh, even if you've not attended the classes or anything yet, if you wish to become a member, uh, come on Wednesday uh, right at 6.30. We'll get you in, get you out first thing so you don't have to hang out and I think if you sit through an entire session meeting, you may reconsider becoming a member of it. I'm kidding, our session is wonderful. Our meetings are, are expeditious uh, and meaningful. But come right at 6.30 and we will examine you. No one's gonna ask any hard questions. Session members, no one's gonna <laughs> ask any hard questions because uh, we would love to receive folks into membership and to celebrate uh, with our confirmands. And we will welcome our new members and confirmands in worship on Easter morning. Good morning. Good morning. And thank you to Dan for his wonderful words about the mission. I just wanted to highlight, it is in your bulletins, you can read more there, but just to make sure that everyone catches that this year's Lenten discipline is going to go to two very, very meaningful and important organizations in our community. The first is the United Cerebral Palsy of Columbus Fund, and our own Daniel Dunner is um, doing great work with them, and we wanted to support him and them. So some of our Lenten Discipline money will be donated to that organization. The other part of our Lenten Discipline money this year will go to Team Philip Foundation, and we know that this is a, a beloved organization from our own Amy House. Um, and they both, both organizations are really helping community members live without limits, and that is a big part of, of our focus in both the mission committee and also the Matthew 25 committee. So if you have money that you would like to donate to either or both of those organizations, please just mark um, Lenten Discipline or even Lent somehow on a check or in an envelope, and we will make sure that it gets to the right place. Thank you very much. Are there any other announcements? Okay. Thank you. All right then. Please stand now as you are able for our call to worship, then remain standing for our first hymn, Spirit Open My Heart, which is found on page 692 in your hymnal. <coughs> Have mercy on us, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your love and mercy, blot out our transgressions. You desire truth in our deepest selves, so teach our hearts wisdom. Let us hear your joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. 
Create in us clean hearts, O God. Put new and right spirits within us. Sustain in us willing spirits and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Let us worship God. Living Christ, our companion on the journey to the cross, we confess that we are always looking for an easier way. We long for the fullness of life with you, but we are slow to abandon the comfort of the life we know. We see the fruit of new life, but we are not willing to die to ourselves. You call us to life in community, but we stubbornly cling to me and mine. Yet you offer the grace of life abundance, even and especially when our best efforts fall short. Transform us, renew us, and free us from our attachment to what was, so that you might bring us into the glory of what you will be. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Children of God, let us be reconciled with our neighbors in a spirit of humility and repentance as we share with one another the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us take a moment to exchange signs of peace with our neighbors. Good job. 
passing of the P, I was asked why I didn't have anything this morning. <laughs> <laughs> but I do. Oh. It's just little. So do you see what I have? Seeds. They're seeds, right? So are these seeds alive? No. Yes. <laughs> right now, are they alive? No. No, right? Because if I just go and put these in a drawer, what's going to happen? They're just going to sit in the drawer, right? Because they're not going to do anything in the drawer. If you put dirt in it and you put water on it, <laughs> not in the drawer, if you put dirt on it and you put water on it and you put it in the sunlight, what's going to happen? So then it, that plant would be alive, right? So just like Jesus was, was buried, he wasn't alive, then he rose again. At the, on the third day. He had a lot of people asking him who he was, what he was doing, and he knew that that's what was going to happen. And he told them, just like the seeds that died and then would come back to life once they were planted, he would rise, ag rise again after he died. Let's go ahead and do our echo prayer. Dear God, Dear God, thank you for sending. Thank you for sending Jesus to save us. Jesus to save us. In your name we pray. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.
God of living water, pour out your spirit and nourish your word within us, that in its time that word may bear much fruit. Amen. Amen. Our first Old Testament reading is from Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31 to 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestor when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Children of God, we will affirm our faith this morning by responding to the first question of the Heidelberg Catechism. So please rise as we affirm our faith responsively. Children of God, what is your only comfort in life and in death? That we are not our own, but belong, body and soul, in life and in death, to our faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. Because we belong to him, Christ, by the Holy Spirit, assures us of eternal life and makes us wholeheartedly willing and ready from now on to live for God. Amen. You may be seated. Our gospel reading this morning is from the Good News According to John, the 12th chapter, verses 20 through 33. And this takes place uh, almost immediately after the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. So we're, uh, we're liturgically out of order a little bit here, since next Sunday we'll hear Palm Sunday and the triumphal entry, uh, and this week we're right after it, but we'll go along with it because this is very, very meaningful uh, and important and marks a big transition in the life and ministry of Jesus. So let us listen together for what God's Spirit is saying to the church. Now, among those who went up to worship at the festival, which is Passover, uh, were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. And Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very, I it would be awesome if I could talk. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. And now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I've come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, 
and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. But others said, an angel has spoken to him. And Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So this passage marks a major transition in the life and ministry of Jesus. Like I said, in the narrative, if not in the liturgical year, he has entered into Jerusalem to cries of Hosanna, save us. And everything is now inexorably leading to his crucifixion, death, and resurrection. If you think back to the stories from the beginnings of the Gospels, Jesus didn't want anyone to know who or what he was. There was this this theme of the messianic secret, right? Jesus was doing these miracles, performing these signs and wonders, healing people, casting out demons, and he kept saying, Don't tell anyone what you have seen. When the spirits would say, we know who you are, Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, he would tell them to be quiet and silence them forcibly because it wasn't yet the time for that secret to come out, for his Messiahhood to be revealed because that proclamation, that revelation would start the snowball rolling down the hill to build up momentum and get bigger and faster, leading to his execution, his crucifixion, his death, and ultimately his resurrection. But there was work he needed to do before that happened. But now, now it is time. He says a few times, in our reading this morning. Now the hour is here. Very truly, I tell you, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Now it is time for that to be revealed, for His identity to be known, and for everything now to lead to that moment for which He came to earth to be executed and die so that He might be reborn like the grain of wheat that falls to the ground and dies to produce an abundant harvest. In this collection of teachings, right, these are all teachings that we've heard elsewhere on, you know, a seed that has to die and, you know, be reborn in order for it to produce this abundant harvest, on the necessity to hold loosely the things that we love and value in this life, that you know, to be followers of Christ, we must walk the way that he walked, go where he went, uh, that where he is, there his servants will be also. There's all these teachings condensed into here, and they all point to the necessity and the inevitability of his suffering and death. The parable of the grain of wheat, the commands to hold loosely the things we value in this life, Jesus' despair and anguish over his coming death. All of this is narrated in response to the request of a couple of Greek Passover celebrants. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. All of these things that Jesus says and teaches are the Jesus that these Greeks encounter. A humble, faithful, suffering, dying, servant Messiah. I have to imagine that 
when these pilgrims traveled from Greece to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover, they had heard stories of Jesus' miracles and works of power, the people that he had healed, the demons he had cast out. They had heard that the Messiah had truly finally come to redeem and restore the kingdom of Israel. And as we've discussed at some length before, they probably expected this Messiah to be an authoritarian strongman, a military leader who would overthrow the Romans and end the Roman occupation of the region of Judea. But here in this collection of teachings, Jesus reveals himself to be exactly none of those things. A Messiah who chooses to reveal his power in vulnerability and weakness, in service and faithful obedience by going knowingly to his death. And we don't directly hear the response of the Greeks to this proclamation. But we do read some verses later that after Jesus had said these things, he departed and hid from them. And although he had performed many signs in their presence, they did not believe in him. So, as before... Jesus' pronouncement of the kind of Messiah he was was met with skepticism and outright disbelief. As so many times before, the people's expectations and assumptions of what the Messiah should be blinded them to what and how he actually was. Now, friends, I'm going to go off script for a little bit here because I, this thought just occurred to me as I was looking out over the congregation this morning. Everyone who comes to this place, whether you have been a member for your entire life of Brookwood or Parkview or Shady Lane or any one of the other constituent churches here, whether you've never set foot in a church before, whether you are new to this community or this country or this church, everyone who comes to this place is in some way asking the same question that prompted Jesus' teachings this morning. We wish to see Jesus. We are all here this morning in some way, shape, or form to encounter the risen Christ and I'm going to preach to our regular attendees for, you know, a moment here, but you can think about this, you know, all for our own lives as well. When folks come to this place asking tacitly, usually, what we wish to see Jesus, what are we showing folks of Jesus? There are so many Christians, there are so many churches, there are so many denominations who have embraced this false image of a Messiah, of the authoritarian strongman, churches who have wedded themselves to political power and financial gain and wealth. You know, are we showing that Jesus, the wrong expectations that so many people carried and still carry of the Messiah? Or are we showing the humble, self-giving love that Christ actually came with? Are we displaying and pointing people to the humble, healing, forgiving, enemy-loving, other-embracing Christ that Jesus shows himself to be? Are we showing folks, you know, a Jesus who loves power and strength and, you know, wealth and prestige and money? Or are we showing the table-turning 
Messiah who calls us to a different way of being in the world? Are we showing a Messiah who blesses the status quo and the power and wealth differentials? Or are we showing a Messiah who says, whatever you do to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you do also to me? Are we showing a Messiah who inaugurates and calls into being an entirely new way of being in the world? When people come and say, we wish to see Jesus, what Jesus are we showing? Are we able to let go of our small, ego-driven, power-lusting selves and lean wholeheartedly and courageously into the humble, faithful way that Jesus really walked. Because that's what Lent is about, friends. That's what this season that leads us to the cross shows us, right? The, the acts of giving things up, of symbolically or literally actually fasting. You know, they're about letting go of ourselves and trusting that God will sustain and provide us. They're about dying to our small, limited, ego-driven selves and opening ourselves to a more expansive way of living and being so that like those grains of wheat, yes, maybe something in us dies, but something so much bigger and more abundant is reborn. That's what Easter is about. That's what the season of Lent is about. And as we walk with Jesus, we hear him in this passage and in many others uh, grieve the life that he has to lose. Right? In, this, in this reading, he, he tells us for the first time, now my soul is troubled. Right? As the hour of his betrayal and death approaches, his spirit is troubled. We hear him in the Garden of Gethsemane, praying in anguish, Father, if it be your will, take this cup from me. And yet, he knows that this is why he came into the world, especially in John's Gospel. He is the Lamb of God who knowingly, willingly goes to the slaughter uh, for and from the sins of humanity. So like Jesus, can we courageously face the grief of what we have to lose in order to really claim that promise of new life and live into something new and abundant and life-giving and full? Or do we continue to cling to what's familiar, to what feels safe, trusting in the way we've always done things? Or do we trust, do we have faith in the new thing that God is always doing? So when we ask, when other folks ask, by coming to this space, we wish to see Jesus. May we show ourselves May we show our visitors and guests and new members, may we show the world Jesus as he is, not as we would have him be. By the grace of Christ, may it be so. Amen. And children of God, I invite you to lift your bodies and spirits to the Lord. Please rise as you're each able as we sing together hymn number 215, What Wondrous Love Is This?
God, you may be seated. And I will I'll take this moment uh, to uh, beat a drum that I'm very insistent upon. I see lots of folks wearing green for St. Patrick's Day. And I will denounce you as papists. Uh, the the, uh, the Protestant, uh, Protestant Irish uh, is orange. Uh, although, of course, we recognize that it is a, a terribly violent, uh, hate-filled conflict that was and continues to take place in Ireland between uh, our Catholic and Protestant sisters and brothers. So I would actually encourage you to wear white on St. Patrick's Day. If you think about the Irish flag, right? the green is the Catholics, the orange is the Protestants, and the white is the hope for peace between them. Uh, so however you, choose to, however you choose to observe, though, um, everyone's Irish on St. Patrick's Day, except for the Scots. We're always still <laughs> Scottish. Um, so, but yes, uh, orange or white for, uh, for Presbyterians is probably most appropriate. <laughs> um, let, <laughs> let, let us pray now with and for one another, with and for this world that God loves so much. Uh, as we share our joys and our concerns. When we hear a joy, a cause for celebration and thanksgiving, I will say, Lord, for these blessings, and together let us say, we give you thanks. And when we hear a cause for concern or a place that needs God's healing touch, together we will say, Lord, hear our prayer. I'll say, Lord, in your mercy, and together we'll say, hear our prayer. Uh, just a couple that I would share. Uh, continue to hold our dear friend and member Ellen Bennett in your prayers. Uh, last Sunday she fell, broke three ribs, and had a brain bleed. Uh, she's still in, the, as of yesterday, she was still in the hospital. Uh, she is still at OSU this morning. She's hoping to be discharged to rehab soon because she's in the middle of moving uh, as well. So keep Ellen, uh, keep Sue Ellen in your prayers uh, for healing and wholeness, peace and courage and comfort. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Uh, let us pray also for the folks affected by this most recent uh, spat of spate of tornadoes, uh, for the loved ones of the folks who lost their lives, for the people who lost uh, property and livelihoods and will have to rebuild. Uh, and we were reminded last night for the uh, animals, domestic and wild, that were uh, affected and harmed by the tornadoes as well. And... Uh, I would ask also that we uh, offer prayers and take actions of repentance for the possibly, probably irreparable harm that we have done to God's good creation, uh, leading us to experience more, more frequent, and more severe extreme weather events. So Lord, for all these things, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uh, there was also uh, a, a really bonkers uh, mass shooting in Pennsylvania, and uh, f the person fled to uh, New Jersey yesterday. Uh, I didn't hear how that resolved, because Elliot kept me busy all night and all morning, uh, but prayers for everyone who was uh, affected in that shooting for uh, the family of the shooter who was killed and uh, with whom he locked himself up, and that's the part I'm not sure how that all resolved. Uh, prayers of gratitude for first responders and people who put themselves in harm's way in order to protect others. We pray for the courage and the will to uh, have common sense gun laws, to make it harder for this kind of thing to happen, and for the whole situation, Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. 
And children of God, for what and whom do you pray this day? Judy! Amen. We join with Judy uh, in praying for her friends Jim and Bill, both of whom uh, are having some health challenges. We pray for their healing and wholeness, O oh Lord, for their peace and comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Tim. Oh, for this is your brother-in-law? Oh my goodness. Prayers for prayers for all the loved ones of Tim's brother-in-law who passed away this past week. As Tim rightly points out, he is fine now. But we pray for those that he leaves behind for comfort and for courage and for peace. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Any others? Kendall, yeah. Uh, just a prayer of, thanks, uh, uh, yeah, prayer of thanksgiving that they did catch the uh, person that in the uh, mass shooting that was referred to. Oh. Amen. He is, he is uh, in detention. He's in custody. Amen. Thanks be to God that, yes, they did catch, uh, they did catch, uh, they did catch uh, the guy without any further casualties? Yeah, he, they, 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 uh, he was uh, holed up and he escaped. They saw him on the, they found him on the street a couple, uh, couple blocks and then he was holed up. Okay, so amen. It's all, it's all resolved, everything's back to normal. <laughs> and it was only three people who killed, which is horrible thing to say. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's 21st century USA, yes. <laughs> Uh, but we do give thanks that uh, he, was, uh, he was taken without any further casualties. So, Lord, for these blessings, we give you thanks. Well, children of God, let us bring all of these joys and concerns to the Lord with confidence as children of God as we pray the prayer our Lord taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And children of God, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and takes on new life, it remains just a single grain. With grateful hearts, let us offer to God the fruits of our lives and labor, that they may multiply and be a source of life abundant for all God's children. You're invited to leave an offering in the basket at the back of the sanctuary on your way out if you didn't on your way in. And in gratitude for gifts we have been given to share, please rise as you're able. As we sing together the doxology you'll find printed in your bulletins. Let us pray. Holy One, as Christ gave his life as a sacrifice for the world, so we offer our worldly possessions as a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Take the gifts we offer, bless and multiply them, that through these gifts and the gifts of our very lives, Others may see and know the saving love of Jesus the Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. And please remain standing as you're able as we sing together hymn number 767, Together We Serve.
children of God, may we be willing to let go of our assumptions, our expectations of what Jesus should be, and receive the reality of his loving, healing, accepting, grace-filled presence. And when others come to us saying, we wish to see Jesus, May we show them the Christ that we know. What does the Lord require of you? What does the Lord require of you? To seek justice and love kindness and walk humbly with your God. Go now in peace, and may the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love and the power of God our Creator, and the communion and community of the Holy Spirit abide with and sustain you each and all this day and evermore. Amen. <laughs>